Welcome back to video number five of the KFA Explorer build series. Um, it's been a long time since I put my last video out. A um, few reasons, I've just been busy, things have been changing, uh, been away flying and all the rest. I still have been chipping away at the build, but not as much as I was hoping. So I'm back now for a little bit. Uh, the airplane's sitting here with the wings on. Uh, both of them Which is exciting uh, I've taken the tailplane off since the last video So rudder wires are all done and rigged correctly uh, The ribs etc are all done. I put the side stringers on the aeroplane uh, And there's also the bottom one runs across the bottom down here so I've been doing a bit and I've also started with the, the turtle deck and the roof of the aeroplane as well. Um, which also means you have to put this bar here on and you have to bend this to shape, mould it to the same shape as one of the ribs. Um, so then when the roof sits on top here, it all talks to each other. So that's where I'm up to. Um, so at the moment I have one of the butt ribs over here, I'm upholstering the inside of it, you can see here, so I've currently got some clamps holding on this section, so same with the butt ribs, I'm using the Alcantara material, um, so this will be in the inside, obviously I will have to cut out these um, and you know wrap them around, and then you do have to do a bit of riveting as well, you have to rivet on angles. Um, got the glare shield, the cockpit panel, the rudder is currently on the table. Um, now you'll see in the video the workshop's an absolute mess and in fact I'm a little bit embarrassed of it but I'm doing a big repositioning, rearrangement and cleaning it so I've sort of pulled everything to pieces and I have stuff scattered absolutely everywhere at the moment. Um, just to create more room because the wings are now on the aeroplane, I need more room. Um, and I have a new shipment due to turn up in the near future as well for full of KFA aeroplanes. So I'm going to have a lot more of these aeroplanes in the workspace here. Um, so yeah, that's all that's about. So I am going to clean this up, I'm getting new tables, I'm going to put a little office section in here too so I can read the manuals and and run it a little bit more professionally in here. Um, but the reason you're here for the video is probably to watch the build of this KFA Explorer kit here. Um, so, it, it's been so long I actually had to watch my number four video to sort of catch up to where I was and where I should pick up on. In the last video, I believe I started putting the interior together. I don't know what that is. I started putting all the center console piece together I think. So I've now posted most of it, I've put the fuel taps in there. Um, it looks really nice, I'm, I'm happy with that finish. Um, there is another piece that has to go here and it will hide the header tank. Um, obviously the rudder pedals on the floor you've seen many times, I've gone on about that a lot. Um, these little laser cut pieces come in the kit like that, they fill in those gaps. Um, the other one's just chilling there, so I'll repulse those as well. There's these fiberglass insert kick panels. They are installed on the inside of the airframe. They come from the factory just like that. Quality stamps there. So yeah, they, they come like that from the, the factory in the kit and they fit in there first go. Uh, I have the other side taken out because I've been working on it in here, but yeah, it was very easy to install that. I don't know what all this shit is. So that sort of forms the interior and then the seat pan will obviously go in here. Cockpit panel, glare shield, um, and all of a sudden it becomes pretty complete. This here is the turtle deck and the roof is here. I have it sitting in this foam sort of sandwiched in there just to protect it. There's also the windscreen in there. So yeah, the turtle deck, roof and all of that is 
it's not a tricky job it's just one that it's a bit of a process to get it right everything has to happen in stages so the wings have to be on so you can set your butt ribs that's that's the first thing we want to do here is get the butt ribs done so you can see i have these little tabs sitting here in fact it may pull off maybe not uh, this one does so these come in the kit just like that they slide on to these tabs welded onto the fuselage the butt ribs will mount onto there and rivet onto those three um, and you need the wings on to get the spacing right for where you rivet these butt ribs so this one's currently clear code together like so so this here is the top left meaning it slots in like this it won't go in because it has clear codes but you get what I mean and then those tabs rivet to it so once I upholster this, I'll then, I'll rivet it first. Now I'll upholster it and then rivet it, sorry, because I want the um, rivets to be on the outside of the upholstery, just for that contrast. It should look pretty cool. So yes, that all comes like that from the factory laser cut. Um, very easy to work with. Uh, it is hard doing this with one hand with a camera in the hand, but I'm sure you know what I'm getting at. So butt rib installed, then you can uh, make sure this here, it has the right angle in it because you have to bend that yourself it's not very hard it's just a matter of getting it right then you can put the turtle deck and the roof on uh, and then yeah if everything lines up make a start by clecoing it don't rivet it straight away there's no need um, cleco it all in place and if it all fits correctly and you're happy with the overlap and all the rest then yeah pop some rivets you also have this angle here it goes onto the back of the, the spar running through the fuselage and it sort of, it'll sit up like that sort of, it'll sort of sit up and there'll be a cutout notch here so this here will run through that so this will become a nice flat surface for the roof to run against um, it, it'll all make sense once I've done it um, yeah and talking about the wings the wings on the aeroplane are obviously on. The, the actual wing bolts are not installed because I'm not going to have it just sit here exposed and use them. They're, it just has dummy bolts in it to pin it all and hold it here. Um, but yeah, this is how your wing struts attach. This is the attachment point. So you can see it has rivets on the leading edge and the trailing edge of the leading edge and leading edge of trailing edge and trailing edge of the trailing edge. Very strong. Uh, there's also doublers inside there. Um, now these wings were factory uh, quick built at the factory, so they did all this work, they rigged it and I haven't had to touch a thing, it just all went in, no problem at all, easy. It's worth the extra money. These are the jury strap mounts, two rivets hold that bracket on, one there, one there, attaches around here, attaches around here, braces all of this here up, very strong. Um, and the main wing strut attachment bolt fits in no problem very strong you can see I mean this is solid bulky stuff but focuses your, your serial number is written there so that is a bit of an update on where we're at um, I have still a ton of parts in here horizontal stabiliser and elevator sitting on the lounge here, I got shit everywhere here um, what have we got here, leading edge, fiberglass leading edge parts in there got the covering kit behind, a few interior parts, turtle deck we've got wing strut um, bearings, we've got the roof and windscreen and jury struts there these are the main struts that hold your tail section on um, I've obviously had to crimp those, bend them, drill them individually it's easy to do it's actually quite satisfying you have to do four of them because everything's dual in these airplanes here's the fuel tanks they're a composite fuel tank um, very nice finish two of them here one's wrapped up still um, one of unwrapped so they go in the inboard section of the wings cowling it's here fiberglass cowling uh, it has all of the pack list here Lots of quality control with kit planes for Africa. 
which is awesome to see. Very well packaged. I do apologize, the uh, card run out, the memory run out in that last card, so I sort of cut the other day short. So I'm back here, it's now Monday, fresh day. I'm back into the build with the Explorer. Today I am painting the rudder spring mounts. These bolt onto the firewall of the aeroplane and then there's a spring that runs through here and the nut does up. So this mounts on the outside of the firewall, the spring runs through and attaches to the rudder pedal or the rudder pedals and it's what keeps the rudder pedals uh, supported and like stops them from falling back if you know what I mean. It gives them the like the return feeling. So I've got to paint those. I've got the flap rons on the ground here. I just started unboxing or cutting this apart and I, I thought I can't miss this. This is a pretty important piece of the build. So it'd be a shame to miss this and not film it. So this is how they come from the factory. They're unpainted. They're a composite flapper on. Um, very nice finish. So we'll come back to that in a second. Also, we've got the flapper on hinges. So there's plenty of them here. So basically how these work is you get a opposites of each other. So we're going to find an opposite to this one. So we need one that has the mount off to the left side, like this one here. So you get these two. That was hard with one hand. Get these two together like that. You see what I mean? Oh, this is hard with one hand. All right, so you've got these two pieces here. Okay, they're opposite. So they go together like this. And it drops down a little bit and it'll join onto your flapper on. So you bring that over to the wing, to the trailing edge. These mounts here that have the little aluminium inserts and in they're riveted in on either side. So this goes like so. So they rivet into there. Five rivets per side, so 10 per hinge. Very strong. And then the hinge from the flapper on will come up into the middle of these two tabs and there's two bolt holes. So that, that goes for every third rib by the looks of it across the whole wing on each wing. I also did finish upholstering one butt rib and I've also riveted it. So that's the finish I've got. I, I painted these pieces and I think it looks really cool. I like how it's got the fabric upholstery and then it's got the painted um, angles. So I riveted those from the back. Um, and the contrast of the rivet coming through, the little bit of silver actually looks kind of cool. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this, how these are turning out. So this is the right one. I've just got it sitting there for now. The left one is over here drying currently. Has some clamps holding it. Um, probably take them off now. It's been long enough. Take these off and give you a bit of a look. So there you go. All riveted as well. Let me turn that music down, sorry. Michael Jackson. Um, so yeah, it's upholstered. Um, and it also has the angle riveted on, so it looks pretty cool. And you can see the difference with this one is I didn't wrap all the edges around on this one. I just chopped them off, chopped the, the upholstery off at the very end there and then riveted the angle on the top and you can't see it. I wish I did it with the other one that's on the aeroplane currently, but it, you know, that's, you learn these things as you go. So this one is how I prefer to do it. Obviously you need to do a little bit on the front of it and a little bit on the back of it, but I, I didn't have to wrap it around the upholstery around and glue it here. Um, so yeah, whoopsie. The next build that I do, I won't make the same mistake. Well, it's not really a mistake, it's not a big deal, but you can see how there's a bit of overlap on the back of this one. So, it's not the end of the world, but yeah, little things like that, which makes builds nice or very nice. So yeah, that's the butt rib. So that's the interior pieces still coming together. I'm just going to set the camera up somewhere here. I'll find somewhere to set the camera up. And I'm going to, yeah, cut, cut into this. I might put it up on the seahorses and, yeah, we'll see what it looks like inside. This will be exciting. I'm putting you 
into the vertical stabilizer of the airplane. Yeah. Now, today is good because I'm getting a full, I'm getting a full day of building, um, which is great. But I like only have today because tomorrow I'm off to Shell Harbour down in New South Wales, just south of Sydney, and I've got to do a, a ferry for an aeroplane. So. All the joys. So I just finished uh, cutting open the flapper on. I think this might be the left hand wing one. But um, yeah, one thing that's pretty cool is the, oh it's not cool, but the smell <laughs> of these here. When you cut it open, it smells like you're in a composite shop. Um, I can only imagine, imagine what the factory smells like in the composite section at the KFA factory. Um, but yeah, the smell, very strong. <laughs> it's definitely um, fiberglass. <laughs> So yeah, I'll give you a bit of a look. The finish is pretty cool. You can see there's a bit of a step here. So everything with KFA is made in-house. They use a lot. The attachments are already installed, done very nicely, all moving. So yeah, I'll get this set up and I'll see how hard it is to uh, hang these. It'll really uh, change the look of this thing. The goal here will be to match drill everything, at least mark it out and match drill it and have it clear code. So once you do cover the wings, it's just a matter of then riveting into those holes that you've already done. Because you don't want to be drilling into the covering, although you probably could, um, I don't want to be doing that. So yeah, I just want to find where the holes are through the covering, just poke it very gently with a soldering iron or something, or even just put a drill in there. Then then rivet it over the top of the covering. So that's how you do this, that's the process. Let's come back from a quick lunch break. Uh, <clears throat> certainly takes you out of you in these workshops, long days. So back to the flapper on installation. We need to dummy install the hinges onto this wing, or the wings. So I've got the hinge brackets, I've got the flapper on out. I've now also got part WFL5, which is called the flapper on hanger, and it has a nylon bushing installed inside of them. So, looking at the drawings here, I'll just give you a reference on the instruction manual. So, this is the outboard section of the flapper on this bit here, and it has that little teardrop looking piece, just a little aerodynamic piece, and it makes it finished. And then you've got number three here, which is that bit here, it's one of these. And then you got number four, which is a flapper on left, flapper on right bushing. Um, so, yeah, it's it's already installed. And then you've got number five, which is the split pin, which holds the whole thing on. So I'm not gonna worry about the split pin just yet. Um, and it should look something like that. Makes sense, yeah. So, turn the volume down for that music, sorry. So yeah, it gives you a better idea. That's what it looks like. You got uh, the stole fences, all of those instructions are there. It shows you it goes on the seventh rib of both wing, how it goes together, what rivets, all the locations. The manual's great, it really is. This is the tail section, the fins, and how it should look. And that's just on my phone. No paper, no wind blowing paper, paper uh, sorry, pages around. It's just on my phone. Easy how kit building should be. So let's try and set this up. It might be a bit hard to do by myself because there's a little bit of weight involved and 
bit of holding and, and all that. So I'll see how I go. If I can't do it, I can't do it. I'll just have to wait until someone's here to help me out. But <clears throat> I'll, I'll see how far I can get. Uh, so yeah, if not, what we've got to do is um, painting. More painting. <laughs> Um, yeah, all of these brackets, they all need to be painted. Those rudder return springs um, that I showed you just earlier, they need to be painted. Uh, wing struts do need to be painted, but I'm not going to do those because I'm actually taking this aeroplane in two weeks' time. I'm taking this aeroplane here to Ozstol down in Luskentai in New South Wales in the Hunter Valley. There's a bush flying competition on, takeoff and landing competition, and I'm sponsoring the event. Um, I'm sponsoring a brand new pair of Bose A30 headset and I'm going to raffle it off over the weekend and then with the money that I make from the raffle I'm going to donate it to the, the hosts of Oddstoll. So just trying to do my little bit in supporting aviation and supporting bush flying in Australia um, and you know make it worthwhile for people turning up. So if I can make someone's day by supplying or letting them win a brand new pair of Bose A30s I, I definitely will. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take this and have it on display. Obviously KFA, it's not a new aeroplane, it's been around for a long time. Um, the brand, I think over 30 years, is probably what, 700 units out there now, aeroplanes. Um, but they're sort of new to Australia still, they're not very well known. There's a few here now and the number's growing, um, but they're still not too common here. So. I think it's a, a good way for me to show people what the aeroplanes are and what it looks like. People can touch it, look at it, sit in it, make aeroplane noises in it, whatever. Um, I'm actually happy that the aeroplane's not covered as well because people will be able to see inside the structure, how it goes together and how well built they really are. So um, yeah, I'll probably do a little bit of filming on that weekend. Um, but yeah, it always be a good way for people to see the KFA aeroplane, me sponsor the event, and it should be a good weekend. So yeah, moving on, um, back to the other butt rib. It's pretty well done. It looks great. It looks awesome, actually. So yeah. Uh, I suppose if I can't do the lifting here, I might just start the painting. Um... I also need the other kick panels to do as well. Um, yeah, fuel tanks, I need to pull the wings off and install the fuel tanks too, so add that to the list. Yeah, otherwise, um, airframe wise, as far as building this machine, um, as far as building the kit goes and my progress with the build, I am, I definitely haven't run out of things to do, but I'm definitely, looking around harder trying to find what needs doing next because it is getting to the stage where you know some engine parts or an engine and and all the rest is needed wiring and the electronics that go into the airplane i'm starting to look at that um and also the covering so once the fuel tanks go into this machine uh, and and it's all finished it pretty much is is covering time um, I know I've said it pretty much in every video. Oh yeah, hopefully next one we're gonna we will start covering. Um, but I'm just doing as much as I can before I do cover the aeroplane because I I, I just want to keep it exposed as long as I can because I don't want to drop anything in the covering or work on the aeroplane while it's covered and you know scratch something or you know press in on it or anything like that. So I want the aeroplane as far like as much of it built possible as I can before I cover it. So that's why I'm. I'm doing all you know, little interior pieces and the painting for these little bits and dummy installing stuff so it's all matched to it, ready to be finally installed once it is covered. That's why I'm doing all of that. Um, so I'm not doubling up the work that I'm doing. I'm just prioritizing the build before covering. So once it is all built, um, yeah, I'll cover it, get it painted, and then pretty much do the final assembly, weight and balance, and yeah, this thing will be flying. So. Um, oh, I'm about seven months into this build at this stage, seven months. Okay, so <clears throat> here I am, I'm sitting in my Explorer right now. Seat pans in, pedals are here, it feels great, like joysticks installed, flap handles here. It, it just feels right, this aeroplane, it fits me. Um, you know, height wise and width wise and all that, it just, I feel like even though there's no interior, on the seat yet and the doors aren't on and the panel's not in just 
looking around and you know where everything's positioned so far I feel like this aeroplane is is the right fit for me um, which is what I want of course um, so yeah um, like I said I'm seven months in to this build and I wouldn't really call it seven months it's seven months since it got delivered building wise I haven't done all of that much to be honest I've been so busy away flying um, making money and doing personal things with life I have not been building as much as I should have been and I've still made a lot of progress so these kits don't take long to build um, and the work's not labor intensive you don't need to be a rocket scientist to do it you don't need ridiculous crazy expensive tools you just need basic tools probably the most unique tool I've had to use so far in this build and airframe wise this builds pretty much done it's almost covering time and fit out time it's you know the build part is pretty well over and done with now um, you know just the roof section and total deck sections all I've really got to go and the rest of it's just bolting stuff on and covering um, is uh, yeah the most complicated tool I've probably had to use in this whole build is a is a roof nut squeezer and you literally buy that for like $80 at the, the hardware store or tool shop total tools I bought mine from and that's probably the most unique tool I've had to use. Everything else is just a file, a drill bit, a punch, um, long nose pliers, ratchets, spanners. That's it, just basic stuff. Nothing's unique. You don't need a ridiculous setup workshop to build it. You can do it in your garage. Um, this workspace is overkill to the max. I mean, this thing's sitting here with the wings on, sitting long ways too, so it's taking up as much room possible and I've still got room for days in here. I could set up another one in here. Um, so yeah, it's not hard to build one of these. It's very easy. The instructions are great. The support from the factory is awesome. If not, I'm here. I'm in Australia. I'm always on my phone. Um, so yeah, you're not you're not without support building one of the, one of these things. And and there's a lot of people interested in these kits and they want to talk about them too. So you get a lot of advice offered too, which is really cool as well. Um, yeah, if you just follow the manual and you just follow the process, it's all you have to do, it just comes together. Um, yeah, it's definitely not rocket science. So if you are thinking of building a kit, if I can get it to this point and get it this far, you can definitely do the same too. I'm actually just going to put the camera back up on, on top of the header tank where I had it just before. Because I, I want to talk about the ordering process of one of these kits in Australia because it's a, a frequently asked question. <laughs> Give me one sec. All right, so you're back on the header tank. <clears throat> Comfortable here. So the ordering process in Australia for a kit plans for Africa kit, uh, the abbreviation, a KFA aircraft, kit plans for Africa. So let me explain a few things. So one, I'm the dealer. I'm the, no, sorry, delete that. One, I'm the Australian distributor for KFA aircraft. So, what does that mean? It means that if you want to order a kit or buy anything from the KFA factory in South Africa, you talk to me. Simple. Um, so, how does the process work? Oh yeah, by the way, if you do want to check out the business name or the, business, the distributorship page, it's Australian Aviation Distributors. Um, very active on Facebook, new websites underway at the moment. There is a current website, but I'm also creating a second one that I'll chop the first one. I'm doing a, a second one that's easier to use. It has better information, easier layout, and it's just nice all around. And the first one, I'm not happy with it. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get rid of that soon. So <clears throat> you wanna build a kit plane, right? A bush plane. Um, there's many options out there, and there's many good options. Um, I'm definitely not here to badmouth any other kits or airplanes on the market because there are some awesome kits and the competition is is really good. Um, so let's talk about what we have available in Australia. We have uh, Kit Fox. Yeah, we're not, I'm not just going to talk about bush planes, I'm just going to talk about kit planes. So you've got, um, you got Kit Fox, Sonics, uh, Just Aircraft Highlander, <clears throat> you've got Savannah ICP, you've got a Zenith, um, you got Jabiru. Um, what else do we have?
Australian aircraft kits. I can't forget that. It's, it's Australian based. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's that's just the name name a few. So there's some really good options there, and and what I be my really good options is, I mean, price range. They all sit around the same price as each other, except Kit Fox. Kit Fox are very expensive. Um, lead times are also insane for Kit Fox. That doesn't mean they're a bad aeroplane. They're a good aeroplane, but they do have long lead times and they're very expensive. And you're not going to get deal or support like you're going to get with. A kit plane manufacturer that has a dealer in your country so the way kit fox works is there's you just order from them directly from the factory by computer or phone and there's no distributor or dealer in your country um, I personally think that's a hard way to do it I think to do it right is to have distributors scattered all around the world that represent the brands and sell people sell to people and are there for them you're in the same time zone you speak the same language you speak the same currency, all that sort of stuff, and you just have that support. So, yeah, I'm not saying Kit Fox are bad, but there's not much support there. You wait a very long time to get it, and they are very expensive. So, yeah, um, there's nothing wrong with them though. Great aeroplane, um, Savannah. There's there's an Australian dealer, um, <clears throat> which is awesome. I believe he's built a kit, which is awesome. I think that's vital. You shouldn't be a distributor or dealer unless you've built one yourself because people will ring you up to talk about them and you don't have any idea what you're talking about. So you're no good in my opinion. You need to you need to build one yourself to be able to be the dealer or distributor. Um, when people ring you up and want to know how this goes together or why or what this part is or how it should look or want photos or whatever, you should be able to give it right away. You should know that once you build one, you, you know them inside and out. Um, Sonics. Sonics are a low wing for now, high wings coming out soon. Um, you know, they're a fast little aerobatic machine, pretty well priced. Um, but same thing, they don't have distributors or dealers around the world. They just have their factory in Oshkosh and you order them online basically and they get delivered. So, you know, trying to share a shipment to cut the cost, not really possible you want to know a question now let's say you're in Australia because I'm Australian I'm in Australia I'm going to talk about Australians um, you want a question on how to build it <clears throat> or technical advice or whatever right now good luck getting it um, you know there's no personal you, you won't be given a personal phone number to just ring up as a mate and and ask for help or get a photo sent to you or a video sent to you you're not going to get that um, I'm not saying they're bad, they're, they're actually a good aeroplane. I've had one myself and I, I like them, but you just don't get that support. Um, and if you're a first time builder or first time whatever, with that type of aeroplane, the support you really, really rely on because it's easy to make mistakes. And if you do make mistakes, then you need parts and you want them now because that's where you're up to. And, and then it puts you, you know, if you can't get them, then you're, you're a month behind. So. Yeah, um, where am I going with this? So, that, that gives you a little recap on, you know, what's going on in the kit plane industry in Australia. It's, yeah, it's all available, but it just depends how available it is and what support is actually there. Um, in my opinion, if you can't ring someone up now and, or send a photo and say, help me with this, it's, yeah, probably not good enough. Um, now let's talk about kit planes for Africa or also known as KFA aircraft. So uh, they have dealers and distributors all around the world um, and we're in Australia so we're talking about Australia. If you make an inquiry or you need support or whatever you're going to be talking to me. Um, I'm very passionate about these aeroplanes. I am the distributor for the aeroplanes so and I'm, if you're in Australia, I'm in the same time zone as you. So, um, yeah, you're not going to be building and I'm not going to be in bed. I'll, I'll be awake. So, uh, I'm, I'm in reach and I, I know what I'm talking about now that I've, you know, gotten to this stage with the aeroplane and the build. So, you want technical advice, uh, you want pictures, videos, or you want me to talk you through something on FaceTime or a phone call, that's all available. Um, and if it's not, I talk with the factory very often and yeah we can we can always help you out 
So yeah, that's a little bit about the support. And I'm located in Queensland on the Gold Coast, so um, in a pretty good location. Um, ordering process. So you've decided that you want to order a KFA aircraft kit. You can order a, an Explorer. You can order a Safari Mark III. You can order a Safari XL with STL wings. Or in the future, you'll be able to order an Expedition 4, which is a four-seat KFA. Um, pretty cool looking machine. But yeah, we won't worry about that until the prototype's flying. <clears throat> so let's say you want to order a KFA Explorer kit. That's what I'm sitting in right now. So you've decided, yep, I'm going to build a kit. Um, what do I do? Where do I go from here? So if you have a two-car garage at home, you have your building space. You're fine. You'll be able to do it. If you have a hangar, even better. If you have a workshop, that's great. But if you have a two-car garage, that's fine. So, you've got the space. Um, okay, you want to place your order. So you ring me, or you email me, whatever. We get in contact, we start talking. Um, so how it works is all the prices advertised in Australia is through US dollars. We speak US dollars because the factory speaks US dollars, so I speak US dollars. Otherwise, converting every single day, people get disappointed and it's too hard to keep up with. Um, and yeah, we don't want to upset people. Excuse me. We don't want to upset people. So everything's in US dollars. Simple. All the prices displayed are excluding tax, GST, I mean, because when you do um, have to transfer money from uh, Australia to US, the rate's always going to be a bit different. So we don't know how much GST, GST to charge you. <coughs> Okay, so you, you tell me you want to order the Explorer kit. You want to order a basic, complete airframe kit with a, fire, a Rotax 912 ULS 100 horsepower firewall forward kit. Easy. So you'll be invoiced 50% 50, 50 commencement deposit in US dollars, excluding GST. Uh, it'll probably be about three to four months before your kit is then ready to be shipped in South Africa. Once, once it is manufactured and ready to be shipped, uh, the last 50% will be invoiced to you. Uh, so then that way we can pay the factory and the factory has their money um, and, and they're happy. So they've built you an airplane, a fully complete kit. And as you've seen so far, it's not a half assed kit, it's a proper kit um, done very, very well. Um, there's a lot of competition in this KFA airplane. They're, they seriously do give other uh, kit plane manufacturers a run for their money. It's it's unbelievable. Um, and I'm not trying to be a salesman. I'm just saying it for what it is. Like, I'm here building one. You've, you've seen it. It's, it's seriously, um, yeah, very high-end stuff. Um, so, yeah, three or four-month lead time. And then you need to ship the aeroplane. So shipping, um, for example, in Australian dollars, the last shipment cost, I think, $12,000 Australian. And that was delivered to the yard just outside to me, to my left. Uh, the container was dropped off onto the ground. Uh, we can fit three kits in the one container. So shipping can be divided by three. So it makes it quite affordable for, for most people. It's, you know, four-ish thousand dollars each, which is pretty good. Um, you don't need to pay import duty or anything. You just need to pay GST on your kit and GST on the shipping. That's it. Um, so yeah, so to recap, you pay your 50% deposit after three or four months. Your last 50% is then billed to you. So then your airplane's paid in full, okay? Then you need to ship the airplane. So you pay for your shipping. Um, depending on how many orders are in that shipment, it might be four or $5,000 Australian to ship it. It'll be 38 days at sea normally until it's delivered right here to me. So. In a perfect world, you're looking at five or six months to, to receive your kit. Um, yeah, so GST only needs to be paid once it is about to land in Australia here off the ship. So it is a very easy ordering process. Um, it's good that you can split the cost up by three months, you know, 50-50. Helps out with cash flow. Um, and yeah, you can get quick build wings. You can get, you know, stage one, two and three quick build options. Um, the option that I most likely recommend to anyone ordering a kit is quick build wings and rigging wings to the fuselage. The factory does that. I think it's like three and a half thousand dollars or something US. 
yeah, there's money and it does cost a bit, but I'm telling you the time you save and you know, the, the effort and the stress that you save by doing that, 100% worth it. Um, this aeroplane I'm sitting in right now had that option. The, the factory built the wings for me and they rigged it to this fuselage and it's just absolutely faultless. Just perfect. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd recommend that. And then you, you just need a source, an engine and avionics. That's it, your covering kit, your landing gear, your wings, your fuselage, your finishing kit, everything is here, even down to individual washers. So yeah, it's, it's a, when we say it's a complete kit, we mean it, it's a complete kit. Um, you know, hardware, the lot, it's all here. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit about how to buy one of these things and how to get into one. Um, marketing in Australia, we're gonna put up soon really have a good crack at it um, because it deserves it people need to know about these things um, it's a, a very cost effective kit plane and it's and it's a great aeroplane too um, i think i've spoken enough now so i might leave it there we'll cut the video off there um, yeah video number six what am i going to be doing i'm going to be putting the the fuel tanks in the wings and completing that i'll be installing the flaperons um, That'll probably be video number six. That sounds like enough. So anyway, I'll catch you on video number six. Um, this is probably the most boring video I've put out, but you know, you win some, you lose some. So thank you for watching and yeah, I'll, I'll catch you on the next one, number six. See ya.